Hello everyone, so today we are going to learn about uh, the practical part um, of preparing uh, electrochemical sample for corrosion monitoring. So what you see um, in front of you is actually a grinder polisher. Okay, so <clears throat> what you need to do before you start, actually you'll be provided with uh, a metal specimen. Okay, so this metal specimen have been cut with a certain dimension. Okay, so what's next? You need to polish this uh, metal specimen with uh, different grades of uh, sandpaper. So uh, this grinder polisher is actually function to polish uh, your metal plate. Okay, so I just want to demonstrate to you like how uh, it's going to be look like. Okay, uh, basically we are going to do wet polishing where uh, the water will be flow in from here. Uh, but this one is not connected so I cannot like um, pump in the water right but uh, once the water has been filled okay water is flowing over here so you can switch off uh, switch on this um, grinder polisher and it will rotate so this actually need to be like fixed with a sandpaper with a different grid for example we start with the um, the hardest one which is the lowest uh, lowest grade uh, probably like around 100 in order to get rid of um, any rust or any oxide that forms so you just need to like um, uh, I mean push with your hand so that uh, during the rotation you will polish so you will polish this both sides until it shines then later after that you will wash it with um, distilled water and uh, some uh, acetone just to uh, evaporate the water the remaining water okay so um, you will repeat the same uh, the same procedure with um, different grades. Just now we start with 100, so you will uh, continue with uh, 400 polish, rinse, and then um, change to uh, 600 polish, rinse, uh, 800 polish, rinse, and then 1000 until it becomes shiny. Okay, so shiny like this. Okay, this is just an example. So we we, we will polish both sides. So what you are going to do next is actually uh, preparing the uh, electrolyte solution. Okay, the sample that have been polished uh, we let it dry in this uh, uh, drying uh, cabinet. Okay, so we let it aside. So the best is actually before you run, you need to polish it fresh before uh, running the electrochemical test. Okay, so the solution that you need to prepare is as follows. Uh, you probably need some 3.5% um, uh, um, sodium chloride or 0.5 molar HCl solution. Both solution is actually function as um, the corrosive uh, electrolyte or the corrosive media. Okay, so once you have prepared uh, fresh, you just keep it aside uh, before you run. Okay. Okay, so now um, we are going to move on with how to set up these um, these things. Okay, so you'll be provided with this cell. Okay, this made from perspex. Okay, you will see that inside you have um, the exposed area. So the diameter uh, inside is around uh, two centimeters diameter, and uh, this is actually a function to put or to expose your. Uh, your working electrode. So in this case, I'm going to slip on your uh, working electrode, which is in this case uh, the mild steel. So after you have like put it or slid it uh, down there, so you will tighten uh, the holder. Okay, just tighten the holder and make sure that there's no leaking. And then after that, uh, you will pour in your solution inside. So this solution need to be fixed with the certain amount. Like for example, this cell is meant for 50 ml. So you need to pour in like around 50 ml uh, of your electrolyte inside. Right. So after you have poured in the solution, you will see that the cell is now filled with the solution. We are going to put the electrodes. So Remember, in any electrochemical uh, cell, you will need like three electrodes. So this will be your working electrodes, okay, and you will need another two electrodes. 
this will be your counter electrodes this counter electrode is actually um, platinum and this one over here is actually your saturated calomel function as a reference electrode okay so i'm putting it uh, in the holder uh, electrode holder like this so what's next is i'm going to like um, push it okay all right okay so then you will clip it with the uh, potential stat so the potential stat that we are using is gamry reference 600 okay so we can perform electrochemical impedance uh, potential dynamic polarization electrochemical noise cyclic polarization and etc okay so uh, over here you have plenty of clips but this clip is actually indicating something it is indicating uh, working working sense reference counter counter sense and um, ground electrodes so i'm going to click first the working electrodes okay so one then uh, two i actually need this uh, electrodes alone it has like um, two clips uh, which indicating that um, it has a sensor as well so white is actually for reference okay nice and uh, this one is actually the red one or the and the orange one is actually uh, counter electrodes okay okay so nice so this is actually the uh, set up so what you are going to do next is actually you need to purge um, the solution but uh, we are going to see the setup first okay all right so uh, the potential stat is connected uh, okay so i'm going to close this um, okay before i forgot uh, the potential stat need to be switched on first okay so the potential stat is actually connected to voltage regulator the function of a voltage regulator is actually um, to give a, a, a stable um, supply to the potential stat so that it wouldn't damage the potential stat later. Okay, so we are good to go. So first thing is actually we need to go to the software that runs uh, the sample. So this... Uh, software is actually named uh, Gambry framework okay so it will open so once you have opened so uh, you have uh, switched on the main switch so now we are going to switch on the potential stat okay so right it's power on and yeah you see over there starts to identify and become green so the sample is good to go um, we are going to perform an experiment uh, the experiment the solution that I put inside is just a blank solution and then um, we're going to run uh, in sequence so the sequence will be first we will run OCP next uh, it will uh, run with uh, EIS because EIS is non-destructive process so we can get uh, the data before we run uh, potential dynamic polarization so potential dynamic polarization will be set as last so we go to experiment sequence wizard okay i'm going to load um, experiment that we have uh, done before oops where is it Okay, so next it will pop up this uh, these things, and um, what you're going to do is you can load a sequence first, and I'm going to choose my own experiment. Okay, so this uh, sequence has been set with uh, open circuit potential first, followed by EIS, and followed by potential dynamic polarization. So we're going to see the 
uh, settings okay so when you click OCP okay you need to rename the name of the samples uh, make sure that you write the correct code with the dates and uh, this is not the recent date this is very old data and then time of the samples that can be run um, probably you can make it like uh, this is actually in seconds so 300 seconds actually around 10 minutes but um, I think uh, in your uh, practical or what you will need like uh, half an hour which is around um, 1800 okay or probably you will need like around uh, 900 second for 15 minutes and then uh, the area over here you need to change so as I said the internal exposed area for the cell is the, the, the diameter is 2cm so if you calculate the surface area the radius will be 1 so 1 square equal to 1 multiply with pi you get pi okay so after you've done you click ok okay and then uh, for potential static EIS okay so you can uh, name your samples again you can even copy from the first uh, file and paste it here but make sure that when you paste it's just until here otherwise uh, it will interrupt this as well this is actually the indicating that it is a EIS data the final frequency will be set like around 10,000 Hertz and the final frequency will be set like around 0.1 Hertz uh, other than that you just keep this constants uh, 10 points and 10 AC voltage uh, the sample areas the same and the estimate uh, Z is 100 so once you're done click OK and then uh, potential dynamic polarization same thing just name the sample okay as uh, this one and then uh, the initial frequency uh, initial potential and final potential is set to minus 0 0.25 and uh, positive uh, 0 0.25 versus OCP meaning that after you finish with OCP it will immediately do polarization with this uh, polarization range scanning rate is set to 0 0.5 uh, sample period 1, sample area still the same pi, density is 7.87 .87, and equivalent weight is 27.9 right, so after you have uh, satisfied okay, you can take a dropper and then you can purge uh, your sample so that uh, any bubbles that form inside will be like uh, removed and at the same time why I'm using this one is actually to maintain the distance between your reference electrode with the uh, working it too. so every time that you do the experiment the distance is been constant so that when you do EIS later on you will have like a, a more uh, fixed uh, or almost the same RS value resistance solution value so after you are satisfied uh, can uh, save sequence first okay save yes please and then you can run so when you click run, okay, yeah, auto select yes. Oh, okay. So, uh, all right. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, you can uh, click yes, and uh, it will run after that. All right. So after you have finished running the experiment, so what you're going to do next is uh, you will switch off the potential stat first. Uh, remember when it has finished it will automatically uh, close the application uh, window all right so next you can go to uh, sorry you can go to analysis and then you can go select the, the the name of the samples that you have run it will appear on the top normally okay so I'm going to show you some examples so this is actually the uh, samples that have been run okay so we can go to this one, the OCP first, probably you can see this is actually the results, you have a, a decreased uh, potential and then uh, some fluctuation actually indicating some uh, formation of bubbles or active uh, corrosion, probably uh, pitting until certain time you see that the potential become constant or almost flat so the time that we have adjust is actually very nice Okay. All right, so we're going to see next the EIS data. Okay, so this is actually the EIS, the 
uh, software uh, to process it is known as a uh, Gamry ECAM uh, analyst. So you have a very good border plot. Uh, you have like two resistance, one capacitance, and for the Nyquist plot, you have a very nice semicircles. So what to do next is actually you can uh, start to fit your data with equivalent circuit. So how to fit your data with equivalent circuit? So you can go to impedance, go to fit a model, and then uh, you can choose the model. So since this is a uh, Randall uh, circuit, and at the same time it experience uh, depression, so we have to use uh, Randall's uh, CPE. Okay, so I'm choosing this one, CPE. Right, so previous do uh, days you need to adjust these va uh, values manually from the reading. But uh, now it is easier, so you can just click auto fit. Okay, so you'll see that uh, it forms. There's a line indicating that uh, the line is from the software, and uh, the dotted line is actually from your data. So it gives a very good um, fitting. So you can close, and if, uh, once you click auto fit, it will open a new tab. Okay, so these things that you need to copy to include in your table. Okay, so how about the Nikki spot? Uh, is the fitting is okay? Yes. Yeah. Very nice. We'll see that the fitting is uh, almost perfect. Okay. With some offset uh, at the ends, but uh, it, it still look nice to me. Okay. All right. So uh, the last one is actually for uh, for PD. Okay. So we're going to see for PD. Right, so this is actually the data for PD. So a very nice uh, active region for both sides. Okay, and then uh, yeah, uh, you will choose this um, cursor. The first thing that you need to do is to read manually what is the echo value. So the manual uh, reading for the echo value is around minus four five eight point one. So we just like select plus minus uh, 10 millivolts from there. So I should choose like minus 4.48. 4 4.48. Where is it? Oops. Oh. Yep. And another one is uh, 4.68. Yep. Okay. So after you have done with this one, you go to potential dynamic and then go to taper fit. And uh, after that, you can click calculate. Close. You see the line. It will do the tangent and the intersection. It will find the values for ICO. It will open a new tab, taper. So all these are actually the data that you will uh, get. Beta A, beta C, ICO, ECO, corrosion rate, and others. Okay. Oops. Okay. So, mm hmm. How about um, we see the effect of uh, inhibitor? For example, we run the inhibitor and uh, we overlay it with the blank. We'll see what's going to happen. Okay, so this is actually the previous um, data for blank at EIS. So you are going to overlay it. So what to do? Actually, uh, you can go to overlay data over here. Then you can select your samples actually. Um, yeah, probably I just need to find a few examples. Um, uh, Yeah, maybe, maybe this one. Okay, looks okay. Looks okay to me. Okay, so um, when you add the inhibitor, you will see that from the border plot, uh, the RC, uh, RCT values is have been increased, and uh, even the capacitance value have been um, increased as well. So how about the Nikki plot? So the Nikki spot, you will see that the blank is actually uh, showing a smaller semicircles, and uh, with the addition of corrosion inhibitor, you will see that it forms a very 
uh, very uh, huge um, uh, resistant uh, semicircles. So how about the potential dynamic polarization? So this is actually the uh, blank samples, uh, and then they can go to overlay. Same thing. Uh, can find a uh, data uh, from uh, from any any samples. Okay. Uh, trying to find the most recent one. Probably you can take from. Here. Okay. Yeah. So you will see that when you add the inhibitor, uh, it is actually uh, lower than uh, the blank. Okay. Uh, the I-core, of course, and then uh, it is uh, a mixed type inhibitor because both cathodic and uh, anodic uh, have a reduction. But uh, of course, when you look uh, on the shifting, it shifts to the right hand side, and this actually uh, tells you that yeah, you have like a larger uh, anodic current change over here rather than the cathodic so this is a mixed type but predominantly um, anodic uh, inhibitor or anodic action so from there you can calculate the, the inhibition efficiency and etc so thank you very much I hope you uh, understand uh, how to perform this uh, electrochemical experiment and um, yeah thank you very much and see you bye bye